Hi everyone, this is ABC of Anesthesia and today I'm going to talk about the best organizations out there putting together really incredible summaries and guidelines for anesthesia. So let's get started. Now the best thing about these organizations is that they provide so much good, relevant and complex information summarized in really easily digestible form and best of all, it's all free and it's online. So what we're gonna go through today is a few of these organizations. Now the first one is the Difficult Airway Society and also Andrew Hurd on YouTube, um, the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association guidelines, the AAGBI or the Association of Anesthetists of Great Britain and Ireland, National Audit Projects and the Cochrane Collaboration. Now, as you all know, anesthetics is a really, really practical specialty. I mean, you can know all the theory in the world, but if you're not able to actually bag mask that patient or put that IV in or a difficult art line or even run a crisis um, and do all that stuff, really the, theoretic, the theoretical skill doesn't really amount to much for your patient care. So that's one of those privileges of anesthesia. You, you know, it's really effective, but it, you have to be at the patient side handling the situation right there and you just can't do it with theory. So look, as much as I'll, I'll rave about these organizations, the best thing as a junior anesthetist is just, just get out there, do the rotation, get into theater and spend lots of hours, you know, being with patients, taking care of them and learning from your trainees, from the nurses, from the supervisors, from the people, from the people around you, um, because you'll learn so much just being on the job. Now a little plug for the ABCs of Anesthesia Bootcamp playlist, which I'll put up there. Obviously I'm a little bit biased, but that's the best beginner's guide to anesthesia. And I just go through hours and hours of material um, from the absolute basics and chronologically to make sure that you know, everything you need to know to be okay in your first day of anesthesia and just get what's going on, it's right there. So have a look at that playlist um, and you can also access the workbook which will be available. I'll put the link in the story notes as well um, and another link just up there. Now the organizations I'm going to talk about, there's going to be a lot of articles and a huge amount of resources there, but you don't need to go through everything. Just remember that you know, to be a really good junior anesthetist, you just have to get to work and, and do, do the time. You don't need to read a lot. That said, um, if you really want to do a deep dive, if something comes up in your case, maybe it's something about, you know, hip fractures or malignant hypothermia or a really tricky cardiovascular patient, that's when you go to these resources so you know what the anesthetists are talking about. I guarantee you, definitely in Australia, most anesthetists around the world will be aware of these organizations and they'll get a lot of the information from them. So just, just imagine if you read the relevant guideline, you'd probably know in theory just as much as the anesthetist you're working with and you could probably have a really interesting conversation with them about whatever topic it is. So this is just so you guys know where you need to go for that information at a really high level and for you to you know, have an interesting conversation so you can learn more on the day. Now, so the first two resources are all about airway and you know managing the airway is probably one of the most high risk and tricky and highly skilled things that anesthetists do and so the first one is a difficult airway society and so the DAS um, it, it, it's just an amazing resource it comes up with these amazing guidelines that really structure the way you should manage or you should think about an airway from the point of view of you know the way you approach it bag mass ventilation LMA ventilation and intubation definitely when I first started anesthesia there's a lot of confusion and there wasn't as much practical step-by-step um, -step advice and the Difficult Airway Society definitely went a long way into providing that really simple effective advice. Now this website will have a lot of free flow charts, free, gu free guidelines and so you can really look at the way a consultant anesthetist would think about airway management and how they progress when things got a bit tricky. Now the next resource is an Australian resource. Um, there's a doctor called Andrew Hurd. He's a specialist anesthetist that works in, in Perth in Western Australia. And back when I, was, I first started training, actually, I just passed my first part exam and I went to this conference in Cairns and he was there speaking. He literally very recently just done these experiments and published this, these trials on surgical airways. Now the really special thing about what they did um, and what he did with his experiments, they took real people into real life situations um, with, with animal models. And, see, and had a look at what people would do in real life. So they had a look at what things would, they would be familiar with, what things were a little bit more difficult, um, and just the effectiveness of each of these techniques. So it was probably the first time that this kind of stuff was studied. So it really was revolutionary in anesthesia. Before that, surgical airways were very much a theater, theoretical conversation. And I remember having many conversations with anesthetists about how they'd manage a difficult airway and surgical access to the airway. So, you know, having a front of neck access. And you know they talk about putting cannulas in, but not really talking about how 
you would then manage ventilation and oxygenation and all the hazards and all the problems that could happen with that. And so Andrew Hurd and his team have done that really, really effectively. Now, the best place for those resources, he, he's definitely published in a, lot of, in a lot of places, a lot of very reputable places, but also he's got a YouTube channel. So I'll put the link down below and it's Dr. A.M.B. Hurd Airway. So that's D-R-A-M-B-H-E-A-R-D-A-I-R-W-A-Y. So his YouTube channel is fantastic. They use a model and show all the different techniques um, and I'll also put some links to his resources there because again, revolutionary and they were the first time surgical airway planning was done in such a realistic way. One of the main things that they saw was that, you know, back in the day when people were training, they found that maybe a needle technique was better than surgical, a surgical airway technique or a scalpel technique because anesthetists were just more familiar with using needles. Um, that may have changed now, there's more data out there, but it was the first time that they really explored surgical front of neck access versus a needle, and then what things would actually work and what things would go wrong. Does jet ventilation really work? What are the hazards? How long do you need to put the jet ventilation on and off for to avoid barotrauma? They went through a lot of this stuff and so much good information in his videos. So a massive plug uh, for him uh, and his team. The next organization that we're going to talk about is the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association, or the ACC and AHA guidelines. Now these terms you'll probably hear a lot as you go through your training, mainly because they represent probably the most comprehensive organization putting out guidelines on everything cardiovascular. And the great thing with anesthesia is that cardiovascular uh, diseases are so important for the stability of our patients that you know, everything from valve lesions to heart failure to rhythm disturbances and perioperative investigation, this team covers it. Um, it's run by an expert panel of cardiologists and other, and other members, and they come up with the levels of evidence for each intervention and whether, you know, what the evidence is and whether it's expert consensus or not. Um, so again, a really great resource, and I'll put the link down below. Um, the main guideline that we would use time and time again, which I've got a lot of videos on, and I'll probably put a link to a video there, um, is the uh, preoperative cardiovascular evaluation guidelines, the latest one being 2014, which is still very relevant now. Um, and I do a whole lecture on that and just a summary. So most of my trainees will hear me say, every anesthetist really loves morning coffee. And that's my mnemonic summary of emergency active cardiac conditions. What's the risk of surgery? Is it low? What are the Mets? And does clinical testing uh, change management? So that's E-A-R-L-M-C, every anesthetist really loves morning coffee. And that's where that comes from, that guideline. Again, really great read if you want a deep dive into preoperative cardiovascular evaluation and what the evidence is. Now the next organization I'm gonna talk about is the Association of Anesthetists or the AAGBI, which it stands for the Association of Anesthetists of Great Britain and Ireland. So the relevance to you is that it's a fantastic organization as well as a charity. And what they do is they publish some amazing guidelines as well. Um, so they've come up with so many different uh, reports and guidelines based on everything from malignant hypothermia to neck fractures to you know acute resuscitation plans, management of glucocorticoids, uh, anesthesia and sedation in breastfeeding women. Um, so a lot of things and the best thing is again, it's all a free resource. So let's say you have a pregnant lady who's coming in for surgery and there's always a question, what are you gonna do about your anesthetic? How are you gonna change things? How are you gonna manage this for the safety of the mom and the baby? They've come up with a guideline so you can really do a deep dive on that. Or maybe one of the most common high risk procedures you'll do even as a junior under supervision is anesthesia for hip fracture surgery in an elderly patient. Now these are incredibly high morbidity and mortality throughout the whole perioperative period. And again, they've got this really good, well-informed evidence-based guideline just on that. Uh, so fantastic resource, and I'll put the address and links down below for that. Now, another thing out of the UK is the National Audit Projects. Now, these are again, amazing, amazing resource. I've probably said that a few times now. Um, so usually these are anywhere from a year long project where they look at really rare complications, so low instance complications that are potentially serious for patients and important for patients and anesthetists. And so, you know, every, every few years they come up with a different project. So the most relevant ones to us are NAP3 to NAP4, NAP5, NAP6, and they're currently running NAP7. So NAP3 was major complications of central neuroaxial block in the, in the United Kingdom. NAP4 was airway complications. NAP5 was accidental awareness during anesthesia. NAP6, the most recent one that was published, is perioperative anaphylaxis. And NAP7, which is still underway, is perioperative cardiac arrest. So again, if you ever want to know the data on these really low inc incidence things, 
like awareness, like anaphylaxis, like you know, failed airways. These are low incidence. It takes a long time to study these things. It's very hard to get all your data right. The national audit projects are looking at this in detail and the stuff they come up with is incredibly well evidence-based for something that often has very little evidence. So really worth a read, really worth a deep dive into. Now almost everyone has heard of this resource uh, because it's not specifically for anesthetists, it's the Cochrane Collaboration. Now the Cochrane Collaboration is an international not-for-profit not for organization and the best thing is they're trying to help people to make well-informed decisions for healthcare. So not only do they have really fantastic systematic reviews about topics, anything to do with medicine and healthcare, but they also have a plain language statement, which is really fantastic, uh, especially if you're a junior doctor or a patient. So the Cochrane Collaboration, I'll put some links to the organization itself and also to the Cochrane Library. Um, and again, if you're ever in doubt about something, a really big ticket item, have a look at that collaboration, have a look at the evidence out there. It's free and you can download that and, you know, again, have some really interesting information, present some really information to your bosses, to your supervisors, to have those discussions, to learn more for your patient safety. Now the final organization, um, I've already mentioned this in other videos about the best resources. It's the British Journal of Anesthesia Education um, series. So this is a journal that really is just a whole bunch of summaries of really interesting anesthetic topics. It's www.bjaed.org. And again, if I'm ever doing a tricky case that I haven't refreshed in a while, I will go to the website, type in that case, whether it's a liver section or maybe something thoracic, or maybe it's a, a interesting medical complaint, rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis, or whatever it is, they will have an article that summarizes a lot of the evidence right there for you. It's a fantastic resource. I would use this on a weekly basis, uh, especially when I'm creating, you know what I love about this resource, it's really great for creating evidence-based vivas for any of my trainees. So if I'm examining them, you know, it's hard to remember absolutely everything for these really niche topics, but what's important is not necessarily memorizing everything, but knowing where to look. And hopefully with this series of what are the best resources, hopefully that's what I'm giving you. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that was useful. So just in conclusion, uh, the Airways stuff with the Difficult Airways Society and Andrew Hurd's YouTube channel and resources, the ACC AHA guidelines, fantastic resource for everything cardiovascular. You've got the AAGBI, uh, the National Audit, Audit Projects and the Cochrane Cl Cl Collaboration as well as the British Journal Anesthesia Education Series. So thanks for watching this ABC's of Anesthesia. Please share with anyone who might be interested in learning more about anesthesia and see you next time.